The Asia Investment Conference that you host uh, every year is uh, something that draws a lot of attention. How important is it for you and your business in this part of the world? It's extremely important. Uh, it's our flagship conference globally. Uh, we've been doing for many years now. Obviously, this year it's all virtual, but uh, we, we, have, we start on the 22nd of March until the 26th of March. We have 300 corporates, 2,500 clients, 100 plus speakers. I'm really looking forward to it and the interest is very strong. Tell me, where does Asia fit in your whole business now? Asia is absolutely core to our business. Uh, it's uh, almost 20% of our franchise revenues uh, globally, uh, which is significantly more than most of our global peers uh, who are more in the mid-teens, or I think on average 12%. So Asia is very important. And Credit Suisse has a fantastic brand name in Asia. We have obviously strong positions uh, in uh, Singapore and Hong Kong as our two main hubs, but uh, across across the region. Uh, and it's the highest growth um, in terms of existing growth, but also going forward growth potential. Okay, and where are you going to get that growth? Uh, I mean, the obvious answer is going to be China. Uh, how do you do that in China? I mean, you have, uh, we had your Asia CEO on the other day, and he was saying that it's very important that you get 100% of your China joint venture. Is that the only mechanism which we, uh, with which you will grow in China, or are the plans there as well? Well, you're absolutely right that China is very important. We have, uh, at the moment, more, um, I would say, offshore business and not onshore private banking. And in terms of investment banking, we just secured 51% in our securities joint venture, Credit Suisse founders, and the plan is, is to go to 100%. We see it as a fantastic growth opportunity uh, for both our, our business, be it uh, private banking related business or corporate investment banking related business. Right. So, so when you look at that, I mean, as I asked you before, is it the, the JV when you get 100% of it, is that going to be the key driver in China or what else do you use there too? Uh, the JV is mainly investment banking. So uh, what we want to have is the, 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 all the licenses needed for our onshore private banking plans, be it uh, traditional private banking, be it asset management, be it uh, lending, uh, corporate banking. So uh, it's a multi-year plan, and uh, we have a hiring plan as well, uh, working closely together with uh, the team that we already have in Hong Kong and in other areas. So um, it's it's across both businesses, but uh, but the joint venture is is primarily an investment banking joint venture. We also have an asset management joint venture where we own a 20% stake with ICBC. Um, and that is also uh, growing very nicely. And uh, obviously, we want to further strengthen that collaboration. Uh, tell us a, a little bit about uh, other parts of the region and uh, where you want to grow in particular. Uh, Singapore uh, is doing extremely well in terms of uh, the whole infrastructure and uh, in terms of uh, the situation as a hub for us. But we are covering uh, other markets uh, in Southeast Asia, like Indonesia, where we have tr traditionally a very strong position, Malaysia, Thailand, uh, we see a lot of opportunities in Korea, South Korea, uh, we see uh, opportunities in Vietnam. So uh, it's really a collection of, of markets uh, where we, we see opportunities, including also more mature markets like Australia and Japan. Uh, outside Switzerland, our focus is on the upper high net worth and ultra high net worth markets, and uh, that's where we have been growing uh, uh, fastest, and it's also the market that grows the fastest. So if you take the entire wealth management uh, market opportunity globally and also in the region, the ultra high net worth market is growing faster than the, uh, 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 the rest of the market, so it's uh, traditionally in the high single digits, if not double digits. Okay, so give us a sense of your hiring plans. So uh, we uh, are planning to hire um, between 100 and uh, 150 over the next three years in, um, in uh, Southeast Asia and uh, similar numbers, uh, if not slightly more for our onshore, uh, uh, onshore rollout in, 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 in China. 
let's just talk a, a little bit about how overall COVID has hit the business and how much of an uplift are you seeing now in a macro sense as we slowly perhaps and arguably come out of it? Well, we clearly see the uh, Asia region to be ahead of uh, the West, uh, whether it's Europe or the US. We already see uh, the activity picking up. We expect uh, Europe and the US to follow in the second half. We are very optimistic that the second half especially will be uh, uh, strong in terms of recovery also in Europe and in the US. We are obviously aware there will be also uh, companies that may have to go through restructuring or even uh, worse. So credit losses will continue to be a topic, but it's more the specific credit losses. And we expect those general provisions to, uh, to come down and maybe even reverse. Uh, and that's why uh, we are actually quite op uh, uh, optimistic that uh, this should help also our PL in 2021. Of course, when you look at risk, we have to talk about green still here. How much of an impact is this going to have on your business? Well, look, uh, green sale is part of our asset management. It's, it's in the first instance an asset management problem. We are working with the administrators of green sale capital, and we are 100% focused to get as much uh, uh, money back as possible. Uh, in parallel to that, we are uh, the board has put in place an investigation whether there were shortcomings in the first or second line of defense. It's too early to talk about that. Uh, clearly. Uh, it's an evolving situation, but uh, I'm actually um, uh, confident that uh, we will um, come out stronger uh, from, this, uh, from this episode. It's, uh, it's a learning process. We have announced to take asset management out of IWM uh, and put it under uh, leadership uh, uh, of Uli Kerner, who will directly report to me. It will be its own division with the own uh, first and second line uh, divisional support that uh, it, uh, it needs and, and warrants. Uh, let's just talk a little bit about the magnitude of the financial hit you may well have. How many uh, SON teams in the franc do you think you'll get back and uh, what ultimately will investors be left with and how much will you be left with to carry the burden and how much of it is insured? Well, we cannot uh, comment on that at this stage. Uh, please, uh, you have to understand it, otherwise you would have communicated it already. Uh, but uh, you were absolutely right. Uh, we already had a strategic review of the asset management business. I was never a big fan of the fact that asset management was part of IWM. And uh, this green seal situation has now accelerated uh, what I was planning anyway to take it out of IWM. So. Uh, Uli Kerner uh, will now put his team together uh, and uh, will take asset management to the next level. Well, does the responsibility of senior level stop with the Herr Varvel, uh, or are you considering further actions? Well, this will be uh, now uh, subject to the review that I uh, uh, said that uh, the, the board is doing. Uh, right now, we are focused on finding the best solution for our fund investors. That's our priority. Our priority uh, as a management team is to get the best solution for them. Uh, and in parallel, there will be an investigation. Uh, and I'm not going to speculate on the outcome of that. One more question. If you, you, know, you split off the asset management, do you foresee it actually being spun off into a completely separate entity, uh, which could be independent? Uh, that's... Uh, uh, potentially part of uh, the plan, but the most important one is now it's its own division. It's in different legal entities. Um, having uh, a holding uh, company uh, uh, around that could be something we are uh, pursuing. And uh, risk control, final question, sorry, is uh, one of your top priorities right now in view of what's been happening? Well, risk control has always been a top priority. It's uh, it's uh, key to every bank. So uh, I'm uh, absolutely focused on that. Uh, uh, not only now, I was and I will be.
Well, in, in some languages, uh, there's no such word as crisis. There's only the word opportunity. Does this present an opportunity and does it present an opportunity for your incoming chairman here as well, uh, who, of course, will be joining very soon, Mr. Antonio Horta Osoria? And do you expect a review from him of the business and a change in strategy with, of course, uh, in tandem with discussions with you? You're absolutely right. Uh, every crisis uh, represents also an opportunity. That's exactly how I look at this. And absolutely, uh, when Antonio will join, uh, this will be certainly one of the uh, key topics we will talk about um, uh, when, when uh, he's elected on the 30th of April and when he starts uh, in early May. Okay, you know, so the thing is also perhaps there was something being touted last year that uh, you could be involved with a merger with UBS and I think the UBS chief executive has said that there's no such uh, action likely to happen in the near term. Can you envisage it? I think the um, topic of UBS is not a topic at all but uh, the um, overall theme of consolidation continues to be a very relevant theme for all banks in Europe it's a market that is challenged by negative interest rates, uh, the need to invest in digitalization, in risk and compliance, and uh, is a market that is in most countries still overbanked. So consolidation will continue, and Credit Suisse would like to be part of that consolidation. There are various opportunities in various areas for us, uh, in particular in private banking, which we're looking at. Uh, and uh, that will continue to be uh, part of our growth strategy, which is predominantly an organic growth strategy, but uh, we are opportunistic to look at inorganic uh, 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 opportunities as well. Uh, absolutely, and uh, cross-border? Cross-border can be part of that, but um, uh, cross-border always comes with more complexity, but uh, it's certainly not at the moment our uh, you know, main focus. Thomas, I want to just concentrate a little bit on Europe. Uh, tell us how the business is there and where you're seeing uh, shoots of recovery and uh, where do you want to be concentrating uh, on the continent? So from a macro perspective, um, as I said, we, we expect the recovery in the second half. Uh, and we see also in terms of um, pickup in uh, M&A capital markets, more uh, CEO confidence uh, coming through, even though uh, there is still frustration in some countries, including in Switzerland, about the speed of the vaccine programs. But uh, there is an increase in terms of confidence uh, that we can uh, see and hear from our clients. And that uh, itself creates an opportunity both for our private banking business, but also for our investment banking business. Tell me about Brexit and how this is impacting you. So we did move some people out of, out of London, but on the other hand, uh, London continues to be uh, our main hub in terms of investment banking for the whole uh, Europe region, including the UK, of course, and uh, even Switzerland. We do a lot of services in terms of investment banking out of London. Uh, in terms of private banking, we have uh, our main hub for the Eurozone is in Luxembourg. Um, but we also have booking um, capabilities in, in Spain and other, other countries and, of course, in, in London. So we have to see now how things will develop. Uh, there is very close collaboration between Switzerland and the UK because Switzerland obviously is also not part of the EU and uh, it was very helpful. How important is it for the EU and the UK to come up with an agreement about equivalence? I think it's important and it's, uh, it's in the interest of both sides because uh, uh, the, the, the London market will continue to be, for investment banking at least, the key market in Europe. I'm convinced about that and they will keep that, uh, that, uh, uh, that status. And uh, some of uh, the consequences of Brexit is also that they can be maybe slightly more liberal in terms of uh, some of their regulations and uh, and that's uh, that's going to be helpful for for the industry so um, I'm convinced that it's in both uh, parties interests to uh, find 
the appropriate agreements and mutual recognitions, and uh, then we should all move on from there. Uh, just a couple more questions, Thomas. Uh, uh, your investment bank uh, in the first two months saw revenues up by about 50%. That, that's a hell of a clip. But can you keep that up? It's actually more than 50%. We said it's over 50%, and it's really doing very well. Yeah, I'm extremely satisfied about our operational performance in the first quarter. It's proved that our strategy works. Clearly, uh, green sale. Uh, is a distraction and is something that uh, we are working through now. But uh, the uh, you know the operational results we had in the first two months shows that we are on the right path. Any idea of uh, a target for year's end uh, with regard to revenues and uh, profits? No, that's uh, too premature to give any guidance on that uh, because there are too many question marks out there around the speed of uh, the overall economic recovery and uh, the vaccine rollout and the macroeconomic uh, situation. Uh, but, um, you know, we said that midterm, we want to get to 10 to 12% in terms of return on tangible equity. And midterm, that means from 2022 onwards for us. And that's what we're focused on. And that's what we want to deliver.